Hi guys, I'm Alexis Balan. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. Just subscribe. You're gonna like me. Sorry about any background noise because it's the middle of a pandemic and apparently that means everyone needs to do yard work constantly. So I want to talk about how the law of attraction kind of destroyed my life. I may end up talking about some childhood trauma because I've been through all of this. This is a trigger warning for anyone out there that might be sensitive to that kind of thing. Sorry. In some ways, when it comes to this spiritual or inner work that we're all doing, I've ironically been blessed with a blatantly traumatic childhood. I don't have to look for little things that my parents might have said like a lot of my friends do because a lot of my friends the way that they were raised looks good on paper not me if i wanted to play the struggle olympics with anyone which i typically don't i can make anyone just break down and cry and in that way i've been pretty fortunate because i feel like a lot of people when they start doing this inner work with themselves they have to look towards these little tiny moments from their childhood that caused a ripple effect of trauma for them. But mine is very obvious. I was born addicted to drugs to two addicts who both left me immediately with my grandmother. By the age of five, I was already in foster homes. I had a state case with the state of New Jersey because I ended up with a black eye in one of my three foster homes because of things that were happening to me in that home that shouldn't be happening to any child and I was trying to fight back. I ended up with a black eye. <laughs> And just being the child of an addict, I'm sorry if this offends either one of my parents, if you guys are watching, your foundation of love is already screwed because you don't know what it's like to be your parents' first priority. Even as a young child, I always knew that something came before my brothers and I. And you're not supposed to feel that. So my trauma started in the womb. It's not some little tiny moments I have to pick apart, even though I do have those two. Mine is a little more blatant than the average person, which in some ways is very unfortunate because I've been through a lot but I can pinpoint a trigger a little easier than everyone else so silver lining perception is everything right and I'm sure a lot of kids in poverty stricken situations or children of addicts anybody from a similar situation can relate you learn very early in adolescence to expect the worst because it's a defense mechanism that actually worked. That's the thing about all trauma. When I started learning about the nervous system and how we react to things, training myself and being conditioned to expect the worst was just a way to survive. That's all our body is ever doing. So don't ever attach yourself too much to these stories because it's, it was just a natural bodily reaction. It's just like this, the most basic example that I can give you that I'm sure you've heard a million times in your life is that story because my mother was in and out of my life and mostly out. She would always promise to come see me and at that time I was still really excited about the prospect of seeing my mom. I would be disappointed when it didn't happen. You start realizing like, oh, if I expect the worst, then I'm not going to be so disappointed when what I was expecting to happen didn't happen. And if that thing happens, I'll just be pleasantly surprised. So it's a win-win situation. And honestly, it helped me survive a pretty brutal childhood. The problem is I took it into my young adulthood because by that time I was too, I was already too conditioned to be suspicious of everybody that entered my life. It's not something that I just trained myself to do. I was literally trained, conditioned by everyone around me to be this way. My father used to always say to my brothers and I, people come leaving. I guess it was his way of protecting us, but that translated to me as, as soon as someone enters my life, expect that they're going to abandon me. Like everyone else has. Like the main people who were never supposed to do that, my parents have. I remember when AOL came out, my screen name was gridlocked. 
And not just because I was a very big fan of Tupac and loved all the movies he was in, but because that's literally how I felt. So, you know, gridlocked, when you're gridlocked in traffic, you're stuck and you can't, there's no way out. And that's how I felt my life was, so much to the point that I made that my identity. What a dangerous thing to to put out into the universe. And I was just operating from such a state of lack. And that's the thing about the law of attraction and manifesting. No matter what, you will be creating your reality with your thoughts, with your perception. I never wanted the worst for myself, but my circumstances made me fixate on not having enough. And all that ever does is attract more of what I thought I was missing. And I know what you're thinking. That's so fucking unfair because that's what I thought my whole life. Especially when people would talk about the law of attraction. I'd be like, oh, well, let me tell you about this effed up childhood I had. How the hell does a child manifest extreme poverty, addict parents, child molestation, physical abuse, foster homes, and abandonment? Was I a little baby operating from a state of lack? I would even hate people who would just be like, just think positive. And I'm still not even on that wave because I believe in like facing our shadows, fighting these demons, because I'm constantly fighting these demons. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you know there's this old guy in Soho. It's like 90 something years old that I like to hang out with. And one day I told him about my upbringing and I was so scared he was going to be judging me. And all he said to me was, well, your soul chose this life for a reason. I know that's woo-woo spiritual bullshit to a lot of people. <laughs> a part of me does actually believe this. From my parents to my upbringing, I believe I chose it all. Every single horrible thing that I ever endured so that I could reach this point and become who I am right now and, be and who I'm becoming. And because there is rarely really rarely ever a case where somebody tells me something that they're going through or went through where I can't be like I feel you no I really feel you I've been through that too so I get into my adulthood and I'm just repeating all these cycles especially when it came to relationships and friendships because my foundation of love my parents the two people who were supposed to always choose me and look out for me number one no matter what kind of dropped the ball no offense if you guys are watching this but i never went into any connection with another person expecting that i expected abandonment i would loop these stories in my head that i was not enough or that i was too much because that's another thing when you come from a very colorful <laughs> upbringing like i did it's just like who 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 wants to deal with this who all of that is just based in insecurity and all, just stories all of it is stories and i would react to these stories all i did was make my life harder than it needed to be by not separating myself from these stories that the world was telling me about myself that I was telling me about myself, that society was telling me about myself. And in turn, I was just creating the same story over and over and over because I was seeking people who would validate that story. Subconsciously, I was seeking people who were emotionally unavailable. Because I guess in some ways, my parents were emotionally unavailable to me. That was the only love I've known. So I was just recreating that type of love, which was not healthy. And also with money, obviously, same thing. I used to like wear poverty on my sleeve. I used to get anxious spending a dollar or purchasing something for myself, constantly checking my bank account. It was me validating the story that I wasn't enough by seeking situations that would reaffirm that. And then always looking at what other people have in terms of relationships, in terms of friendships, in terms of possessions. I don't get that, like that's not for me. None of it's true, none of it. And that's kind of why I'm making this video because I realized this so late that I wanna prevent someone else from realizing it this late. Because I started recreating that story over and over and over and over. I was enduring more trauma and more trauma and more trauma with these different situations that were just causing me pain. You're creating your reality whether you wanna do it or not. So you might as well vibrate from a state of love and abundance and knowing 
that everything is gonna work out in your favor and just surrendering to that life would have been so much easier if i would have learned this earlier it would have been way easier if i was just raised like this that's why i want to make this video because now i have more things to heal from i have more trauma to heal from and now instead of things from my childhood coming up and they do every single day i'm bad i'm fighting these demons every single day it's things from my early 20s that are coming up it's things from my last relationships that's coming up that i have to heal from and that's what ends up happening you end up just doing more to yourself but the good news is you can overcome it i'm not saying i'm all the way there yet i'm not even saying i'm close it's work it's work it's work that i'm happy to do though so many books it's so many podcasts it's so much studying but i'm so fortunate to be in a time where we have this information neuroscience is new and all it really does is it's a way for western science to validate eastern philosophies because buddhists and yogis they've had this down packed for ever they've always understood the power of stillness the power of thought but actually having it presented to me in a way that's science with actual evidence and studies has been comforting and it's something that I am just so grateful to be alive in this time where I can do this work because it's hard not to see your family as your oppressors when you start doing this spiritual work. They didn't have these tools and they didn't have this information. And all I can do is separate myself from things that might be toxic for me. And sometimes that is the people that you love camera just died so I need to hurry up. In the end, I'm, this is for my family. I'm trying to heal my lineage by doing this work. I really hope that something in this made sense and resonated to you. And if you would like me to talk more about the things that I'm doing to get out of that state of lack, the types of books that I'm reading and what I'm learning and the podcast that I listen to and just Honestly, ask me anything. It helps me because I'm still on this journey. So I'm probably not someone you should look up to, but I'm definitely here on this journey with you. Please subscribe to my channel. Share this video if any of it, if anything in it spoke to you. My headband and the beads on my wrist were made by my sister-in-law. If you tell her I sent you, she'll hook you up a little bit. I will have that information in the description below. Thank you for listening. Bye.